guys, what's up? I'm Justin Davis. Welcome back to the channel. Please do click subscribe because we're going to have tons of new racer drones, FPV gear, and toy drones coming in all week long, every week. So you're going to get to see the latest and greatest coming out of China and around the world. Today I have something new for my friends over at Geek Buying. This is the Diatone 215. It has some tri props on here that I put on here for testing. It does come with two sets of props uh, around the 200 and some dollar range. It has 20 amp ESCs on it, 2206, 2000 kV motors on here. So these are super beasty on 4S. It rips uh, through the ceiling when you punch this throttle. Kind of a low profile quad and uh, very nice four mil bottom plate on here. So I don't think that it's gonna have too much structural integrity. Uh, um, worrying about that when you have crashes, it's gonna have structural integrity problems. So I think it's gonna be a pretty durable quad. And in my testing so far, I have had pretty good experience with this quad. So no, no crashes yet. It's um, needed a little tuning out of the box and I'll go into that in just a little bit. But let's go ahead now and take a closer look at the Diatone 215. Okay guys, here we are with the Diatone. This is the Tyrant 215. I've got a 4S battery on here. It's one of the Tattoo R lines. I've been testing those last week. And this last weekend, they, they, they are pretty awesome. If you haven't tried one of these yet, you gotta get your hands on a couple of these and fly some of them, because they're super, super punchy. Um, I'm set up here on my Fat Sharks, and I do have it recording so I can show you some of the the flight footage and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna take off I've got these tri props on here because that's the ones I am liking right now um, gotta watch this wire in the back by the way it will slip over to the side just a little bit but it's pretty secure there right now you can run it on this other side of the antenna but you really have to watch this XT60 connector because if you have it on the other side sometimes it does hit this prop so um, you might want to watch your mounting solution for that. Try to come up with something a little better. Sometimes what I do is I twist this cable in the back to make it a little tighter, and I make sure that I thread the the uh, balance cable through the the two uh, positive and negative leads there. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to arm it. So I'm in stabilized mode right now, and it is very very. Very smooth sounding quad. And when I do punch out with this quad, it is a beast. Probably one of the most powerful quads that I've flown in the recent months. Looks great up in the air. These 2206 motors really do have a great punch out, especially on this battery. This tattoo R-line battery specifically for racers and racing. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into a different mode. I'm going to switch into horizontal. And I'm going to fly a little more aggressively. And the PIDs aren't totally tuned you guys so it has a second set of PIDs on there at the moment that I've gone through. I got the defaults on there right now and changed them just a little bit so now I'll go ahead and do a little throttle punch out. One, two, three. And it's gone. And once it gets up there, it's almost kind of hard to bring it back down because it just wants to float a lot. Now I'm going to bring it back in a little closer. And I'll put it in horizontal. Now I'm in horizontal. Here we go. We'll try some flips. In horizontal, for you guys that don't know, it's automatic stabilization after your move. So if you go forward, it's gonna kind of stabilize for you. And it's nice to practice before you go into acro, before you start trying to learn full acro with no stabilization. Turns your accelerometer off. That's how most of the guys race with no accelerometer, full acro. And this quad is a beast in full acro. But very tight turns. And if I get too low on this battery, it does have low voltage protection on there, so it's really nice. Just do a horizontal punch out here. It gets up there pretty quickly. It didn't want to come down. 
So I'll come back over here. I'll flip into acro just for a few minutes. And so now you have no stabilization. I don't fly line of sight and acro too much because it is pretty hard. But kind of fun to play around with it. I think I just heard my alarm go off a little bit. But a pretty tight roll. I've got around 75 on the rate, the roll rate on here, and uh, around 75 on the pitch. I believe I have 80 on the yaw. And I'll give you all these pit tunes in the description of the video. But pretty cool quad, you know. I mean, I've I've flown a lot of them this year, a lot of racers. So for an RF version, almost ready to fly, this is this is kind of cool that it it comes with most everything that you'd want on here. You don't have to replace that camera with something else. Other quads that I've gotten, I've had to replace the cameras on there because they weren't very good right out of the box from the factory. So you always want something a little bit better on there, but this is a decent camera. A lot of guys like those HS 1177s. And 600 TVL is, is just fine for what most of us do. You don't have to go super extreme or HD or anything. A real nice punch out. Kind of hard to get it back down because I don't want to kill the throttle totally and just have it hit the ground. It's oscillating a little bit, so I do need to pit tune it just a little more. But with the second round of pids, it seems to be doing pretty well. And like I said, I had no problems flying this one. Didn't have any crashes or any system malfunctions, anything to go bad on me. So it's, it's a nice quad if you don't want to build and you just want to jump right into practicing racing. It's a little more expensive than some of the other ARF quads that I've gotten, but it's worth the price in my opinion because you get a lot of Everything that you'd already want on here, larger motors, four millimeter bottom plate. You don't have to worry about breaking a three mil. Top plate could maybe be a little bit thicker, but you know what, 1.5 on top plate is pretty standard right now, 1.5 to, to two mil. And the video system on here is perfect. It's 200 milliwatt. And you can put a variety of receivers, receivers on here, Futaba, Spectrum, or FR Sky, I have FR Sky Tyrannus on mine. So pretty nice guys. I like this one. This is one I'm not sure whether I'm gonna sell or not. I'm not, not sure about it. So I think my low voltage beepers gonna start going off here in a second. I've been flying for quite a few minutes. Yeah, there it goes. When I pump the throttle, it's giving me a little little voltage beep. So I'm going to go ahead and land it because I don't want to damage this R-Line battery. But uh, very, very nice. This is uh, a pretty awesome quad, the Tyrant 215. I, I hope to get a couple more quads from Diatone. Those quads do seem to be made for racers, uh, made for, for racer pilots in mind. Um, it does have, by the way, it does have a, a, a fiberglass plate underneath here separating the PDB and the neat thing about this PDB on here is that it is recessed into the carbon they they drilled out a bottom plate in here and the fiberglass piece goes in first and then the PDB on top of that so you don't get any any problems with shorts or anything um, but it does not have BL heli on the ESCs I would like to see that on the newer versions hopefully when they come out with the next version that we would get have uh, programmable ESCs. I do like to do that and flash BL Heli because you have a lot of control with BL Heli, especially BL Heli um, uh, S coming out too right now and BL Heli 2. But this is a great quad. And anybody that's looking to um, to race or do freestyle stuff, this is thing is super awesome. Uh, I got to give this one right away. I'm, I'm probably going to go 4.5 to 5 stars on this quad. Uh, right out of the box. So super cool in my opinion. Two thumbs up if I could give it. So 
I love this one. So I'll see you back in the studio now. We'll talk a little more in detail about the construction and the components on this frame. Okay guys, welcome back from the field. Thanks for watching that flight test. That was a lot of fun flying this one. Ever since I got this one out of the box, and even from the first time I flew it, I knew that these motors were super beasty. Uh, I love the power system that they included on this one. It has tons and tons of power. A friend of mine was flying with me the other day when I was just testing it out at default PIDs on there. Nothing special and he couldn't keep up with me. Uh, he had Emax 2205 motors and 20 amp ESC. So similar but uh, a little smaller motors than what these are. And the coils in these are actually pretty nice. So you can see up inside there, they're pretty tight. Um, nicest thing about this is that out of the box, you don't have to upgrade or do anything special to get a, a super thick bottom plate on this one. It is at four mil on this bottom plate. So it's reading 3.9, but that's not accurate. It's, it's actually four mil. There we go. And this top plate is uh, right about 1.5. And the one up front is also at 1.5. You have a little bit of space up here for a GoPro uh, or you can run a cube cam or some kind of run cam too up here. You've got Velcro strap holes on the right and left of the pod up front. The camera on the front is a 700 TVL. So uh, I believe it is a CMOS on here. It doesn't say on the Diatone website, but I am assuming that this is a CMOS camera. The resolution looked pretty decent though. Uh, up inside here for our flight controller, we've got a NASE 32. This is a revision six and uh, I have it all set up in clean flight. Super easy to set that up um, with your Tyrannus. This strap also is a little bit long for my taste. It does hang over quite a bit. So you can probably trim this strap back just a little bit because um, you, know, you don't want it hanging down and flipping up and flapping while you're flying. I did burn up one of the VTXs, so I want you to be aware of something. There's a little bag that comes inside your diatone box. And if you read that, it says, when replace the antenna, beware of the built-in black spacer to prevent loss. Now, these are like little tiny black spacers, and I thought they might be rubber or something like that, but they feel like they're like little tiny carbon um, spacers. I'm not 100% sure about that, but inside the antenna, <clears throat> they're suggesting that you put it inside here in between the antenna post and the bottom of the connector here. So, um, and that keeps your antenna from frying. So I did fry another one because I had never seen something like that before. And I thought, eh, that's probably not a big deal. But actually with this model, this particular model, it is. So make sure that if you remove this antenna or you put the new one on there, make sure that you have that spacer in there to uh, avoid frying your VTX. Because when I came down after my first flight and I plugged it back in, um, it, it would no longer power up the VTX and it, it fried it. So I had to ask for another one. So uh, be careful there. Also, some of these circuits under here, you wanna make double sure that you don't touch anything because this one circuit in the very back back here, it is susceptible to shorting out if you touch it with something that is uh, conductive. So you can fry your whole PDB. So be very careful if you pop the top on this and you're putting your receiver somewhere. Uh, I put mine up front up here. It's a Tyrannus D4R2 and I have kind of coming out the side there and up to the front. So just be very careful with that. Uh, also, let me go ahead and plug this in for you real quick and I'll show you how all the LEDs light up because it is a really nice LED setup on here. So we have LEDs all the way around the front and back. Very cool. This thing is just super lit up. And it's in fail safe right now, so um, don't have the transmitter on. But you have your 5.8 gigahertz antenna back here. Standard clover leaf comes with it, very nice. This top hasn't popped off yet in several crashes, so um, that's decent. Uh, this, this top hasn't popped off yet in uh, several flight tests that I've done. I haven't done any hard crashes, by the way, but um, 
if that does pop off, take a little hot glue and just put a little hot glue over top of the wires. And that way it'll keep it a little more uh, safe in some of your tumbles that you, you might have. So the next thing with this, this uh, particular drone is that it does have a 200 milliwatt VTX on here, which is awesome. These guys build quads because they know we want to race them. We race with our friends. We want to be able to change channels. So you can change channels on this one quite easily. It has a little LED display in here, tells you what channel you're on, and you can press this button in here to change channels. So uh, you have 40 channels on this transmitter to change from. So you have plenty of, uh, plenty of channels to choose from, and uh, that is extremely nice. It's not a 600 milliwatt, like I've told some of these companies, please don't put those on racer quads because usually we're flying with friends. Uh, unless you set it up that way from, and order it that way, that would be nice, but most of us want to fly with other guys and uh, near races. Now it does not have an OSD on here. I thought that was kind of a drawback for this uh, uh, sort of ARF, almost ready to fly. I would like to see that there would be some built-in OSD, but there's not. So it does come in with a, a built-in uh, five volt and 12, uh, 12 volt external plugs in here. So you have some extras on there. So if you wanted to add an OSD, you can. Uh, however, in the meantime, if you guys are new and you're just flying your batteries for the first time, it does have a low voltage protection on it. So if you go getting below battery voltage, it's gonna start beeping out in the field and let you know that uh, you're about to kill your battery. So that's a nice feature about that. Uh, very, very nice. It is also spinning five inch props on here. These are some dowels. It comes with, um, actually it comes with two sets of dowels and they're the single prop version, which is very, very nice that it comes with dowel. And if you don't know about Dow, if you're just getting into it, Dow is some of the most indestructible. Uh, they just they just kind of bend, and sometimes you can bend them back. I wouldn't bend them back too many times though, because it will create vibration and stress the motor. So uh, if you have a nice hard bend in one of them, go ahead and replace your prop. So two sets of props there, and you also get two battery straps. That's kind of nice that that comes with it. You get some diatone stickers. You get motor protection plates, and the screws in here are just a little bit longer to accommodate these, so um, try not to mix those screws up, because if you put the longer screws in without these plates on, you can damage the motor, so be careful there. Uh, but very nice that it does include bumper plates, because I've had hard crashes where it just bends this bell, and then once the bell is bent and the shaft is bent, the motor is done, unless you can get a new bell for it. Some companies don't offer bells. Then you have extra wires and connectors in here. You've got some uh, 12 volt, five volt cables in here for your extra components that you can add. They have two of those in there for you. Uh, and other, if you're using other receivers, you can use those wires for that. And if you don't want to use this mini cam that came with it, it is a pretty small cam. I'll show it to you up close here. It's fairly small. If you want to use a standard size cam, you can do that too. The HS 1177 will fit this. So they include an extra uh, standard size camera mount on there. Very, very nice. They include that in the box. But overall, I really like the presentation from Diatone. All their stuff seems to be well thought out um, and well planned and coordinated before they send it out to us in the mail. So uh, these guys make race quads. That's, that's pretty much all they do. So. Um, they, they really know their stuff. So this 215, definitely one of my favorites in the last couple of months. Uh, it's been around for a little while. I've seen it around and I really like the way they have this long bed on the back. Uh, and the power system on here is just totally awesome. So if you can grab one of these, be sure to do that. You can check out the link below, by the way, if you like that quad. If you like how, what you saw here today, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and maybe a comment below. So. Thanks again for watching. I'm Justin Davis. I will see you on the next one.